Early Sunday night, two men opened fire on a community center in Garland, Texas, that was uh, playing host to a Muhammad art exhibit and contest uh, that was being held there. Uh, the two men drove up in a vehicle, were stopped by a security guard's car, left the car, and then opened fire. In that initial fire, a security guard named Bruce Joyner was shot in the ankle. Now, he has since been released from the hospital. He is okay. Uh, but shortly after that initial fire, police officers in the area, security guards, I've seen some reports of a SWAT response team as well, uh, collapsed on the area, and uh, one of the police officers shot both of the uh, attackers dead. Um, and then coming out of that, I mean, look, there's, there's a lot of different angles that we need to take on this. We have some initial information about one of the men, one of the attackers at the Muhammad Art Exhibit, a little bit of information about him. We're obviously going to have some discussion about the type of event that was being held, the organizations supporting it, and the interesting media stance on uh, the wisdom of holding this sort of event, of course, because yeah. this is uh, similar in some ways to the Charlie Hebdo um, situation that I feel like we just came out of, and some of the same questions are being raised by this situation, but considering some of the groups supporting it and their stated political positions, uh, there are some additional wrinkles to the situation that were not present in the Charlie Hebdo uh, situation. And so I do want to provide a little bit of information about the event and some of the some of the, the parts of the event. So it was held, as I said, in Garland. It gathered several top anti-Islam activists. We're gonna have quotes of theirs, by the way, and dozens of supporters for a two-hour series of anti-Muslim speeches. It was capped off with a contest for drawing the Prophet Muhammad. The winner was awarded twelve thousand five hundred dollars. In some other reports, I've heard ten thousand dollars, but. In any event, a very large amount of money was handed over to the person who produced the best or the most incendiary drawing of the Pro Prophet Muhammad. That was sort of the, the keynote of the event, I guess. We also know a little bit about one of the shooters. Now, there's an additional police raid going on. They're, they're uh, trying to gain information from the apartments of the shooters. We know one was named Elton Simpson. He had previously been investigated by the FBI and uh, detained in 2009 and 2010 over his desire to travel to Somalia to join up with violent jihadists there. Uh, they found it uh, difficult to make those charges stick to prove that he was going to be traveling to engage in acts of violence. And so he was, of course, released, although occasionally he had been looked in on by the FBI. Um, he was, however, a part of this attack. Uh, so, I mean, what, what is your initial stance out of this? I, I do want to, in just a little bit, we're gonna turn to some of the Twitter activity of one of these shooters. But this, this has basically shut down the media. This is all that we have coming out of the, the weekend is, is the horror over this shooting. Right. So, uh, first of all, let's acknowledge the obvious things. Uh, the people uh, that are holding this event uh, are hateful people. They've been condemned by the uh, not only the Southern Poverty Law Center as a hate group. As a hate group, yes. Uh, but also by the Anti-Defamation League as a hate group. Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, it, it's very clear. Now, uh, obvious point number two is under no circumstances should anybody be shot under uh, for anything for this or for any other reason. Yes. right? We're squarely in the anti-shooting camp here as progressives, mm -hmm. and so uh, the only people worse than the uh, people at the event were the people shooting at the event. Yes, and and by a country mile. Yeah, they were they were worse. Let's yes. be clear about that. <laughs> yeah, much much worse. So, uh, but. Luckily, uh, as with all hate-filled people, and then this time I'm referring to the shooters, uh, they're uh, profoundly stupid. So they think that they're tough guys, and they're going to, ha you know, have the streets of America mm -hmm. filled with blood, running with blood, and all that stuff. They shoot a poor guy in the ankle, and then boom, boom. An unarmed security guard. They yeah. shot one unarmed security guard in the ankle. How very, very brave. And then uh, a guy with a gun shows up. He's actually uh, doing uh, private security at the time. He's uh, a traffic cop. Yeah. Okay. Who's off duty and doing the security detail? Boom, boom, puts them both down immediately. Yeah. Now that's a good shooter. Yeah, he was he was a good shooter, and and to the credit of the people organizing the event, at least I think justifiably understanding that there would possibly be the threat of violence at the very least, paid uh, quite a bit of extra money for extra security, and so it might well if they hadn't done that, it might have gone much worse. And, Thank um, God they did. Yeah. Yeah, and so I don't want to have to defend awful people, but sometimes awful people people hold the same position as you on certain important issues. And and we were very clear in the situation of Charlie Hebdo that um, we think it's ridiculous that anyone would resort to violence as a result of something like a cartoon. And you should have the right, obviously, in America to do that. But that doesn't make it a wise thing. I mean, you could write the N-word on a sweatshirt and walk around downtown Dallas or Houston. It doesn't make it a wise thing or a smart thing or a socially acceptable thing to do. And I might, 
I might defend your right to do it, but that doesn't mean I have to like you as a person or as a result of it. And so this is one of those weird issues where we find ourselves defending people that we find to be absolutely despicable. Not necessarily everybody attending the event, but what you're gonna see in some of the videos we're gonna play for you, some of the quotes of the people who spoke at the event, and some of these are just awful people who are, they seem to be desperate, frothing at the mouth for this sort of violence so that they can justify the, uh, the preconceived notions they have about Islam and about Muslims. Well, so that's, you know, again, point number two to the stupidity of the shooters, which is that they accomplish the very goal of the group that they are trying to fight. Mm -hmm. How fundamentally ignorant. So the Pamela Geller group says, uh, uh, you know, they don't make much of a distinction about moderate Muslims. She believes there are no moderate They're all the same. Muslims, right? <laughs> Fascinating. I, I I thought I knew some, but uh -huh. okay, apparently you uh, were wrong. <laughs> no, there are 1.6 billion Muslims are all radicals. So mm -hmm. there's not a lot of the nuance of other people that talk about this. Pamela Geller doesn't do nuance. No, um, Islam is evil. There are no moderate Muslims. And then she posts things on our website from other people that are just beyond outrageous. Like, no, the right uh, model is Atatürk's model in Turkey, mm -hmm. where he destroyed the mosque and got rid of Islam entirely. Except Turkey is 99.8% Muslim, so yeah. your facts tend to be a tiny bit off. I don't okay? know if she'd be willing to make that bargain here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure you want that. Be careful what you wish for. So they're factually wrong, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm. So, but when these idiots go in and shoot people and do this act of violence, um, and then everybody in the building that's attending this other hate event turn around and go, we yeah. knew it. We knew it. Now, they, you didn't know it. Those are two idiots who've been investigated. One of them who have been investigated. has been investigated before. They and God knows what will come out about the other one right. in the next day or so. There are estimates of 3 to 12 million Muslims in America mm -hmm. who are citizens of America, 100% American, just like everybody else. Those two uh, idiots don't represent millions of people. Yeah. Millions of people weren't there. Hundreds of people were Dozens weren't there. There was only two guys. Only two people. Right? All and, the rest waiting to commit acts like this, perhaps. Yes. That's what they would say. And, and and so, for example, random story in the news today that's getting no coverage at all. Uh, four people shot dead in a uh, bridge in Wisconsin. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, now they don't know why they did it. It's the latest articles on it were brief that it appears to be a random act of violence. Now, if four people are dead in Texas. No one's dead, thank God, right? Mm -hmm. Except well, the two, the two shooters, Sarah's. but right, but <laughs> they they earned it. Yes. <laughs> um, and so, but. No, nobody's going on talking about how whoever the shooter was in Wisconsin represents all Americans. Yeah, represents 300 million Americans. Whatever religion he happened or to be in, or all gun owners, whatever or cultural group he happened to be in, whatever it is, nobody talks about that. Nobody says they represent everybody because it would be preposterous. Yeah. Okay. And it would also be preposterous to say those two guys represented, you know, yeah. three to 12 million uh, Muslims in the country. Uh, and by the way, if you're worried, if you're scared to death like these guys are, the ones that were at the event, they're so scared. They're like, oh my God, the Islamicist Asian of America. Yeah. We've almost lost Tulsa. Right? I mean, <laughs> absurd, insane, you know, conspiracy theories in their head. Obama, according to Geller, is a foreign born Muslim mm -hmm. and a love child of Malcolm X. To give you a sense of how kooky these people are. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so don't don't help them. Don't do doing yeah. that act of violence winds up helping them. You're so stupid. Or it could have hurt them, which would have been much worse. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and so the, the people who were in there, they were already f fairly immune to any reason at that point. But now they're never going to question themselves for the rest of their life. And by the way, you, you idiots, in in the Charlie Hebdo attack, they killed many of the cartoonists. That didn't stop people from drawing the Prophet Muhammad. So you're ill-fated, stupid attempt to do the same is no more likely going to shut it down in the past. In fact, it seems to be spurring more people to do it. We probably have more events as a result of it because they want to stick their thumb in your eye. Look, if there's a, I'll go further. If there's a shooting uh, at a KKK rally, that is profoundly un-American. We have freedom of speech. Even the KKK is allowed to say whatever they want, right? Those guys should be either arrested or if they're clear and present danger as they were in this case, shot and killed yes. by the authorities. And by great shooting, I don't just mean that they Traffic cop was an awesome shot, which he apparently was. They were wearing body armor, mm -hmm. but I mean a perfectly appropriate shooting. Like, yeah, <laughs> finally yeah. a shooting that People's, made a ton of sense. People say that we're like we have a knee-jerk opposition to the use of force by police. No, in some cases it makes sense. Like when they both have assault rifles and they're shooting at police officers. Right. We totally think it's fine. Then. So even at a KKK rally, to use the most extreme example. Mm -hmm. Of course you shouldn't shoot at them, and when you do, you create some degree of sympathy yes. for their cause because they almost got shot. Again, a profoundly stupid idea. Yes.
Now, uh, we do have a little, I guess, a little bit more information into some of the motivation, or at least the thinking of the attackers leading up to this. There is a, a Twitter account titled Sharia is Light, bearing the image of extremist Islamic propagandist Anwar Awalaki, Al who was killed in an American drone strike in Yemen in 2011. It posted an allusion to the attack just minutes before it happened. It also um, posted a link to another Twitter account. We're going to read some of the tweets that came out both before and then after the attack. Uh, this is the Abu Hussein al uh Twitter account. The knives have been sharpened. Soon we'll come to your streets with death and slaughter. We have Allahu Akbar. Two of our brothers just opened fire at the Prophet Muhammad uh, art exhibition in Texas. So obviously they had been in contact with some other extremists, clearly. They thought they were safe in Texas from the soldiers of the Islamic State. Yeah, you jackass, they were still largely safe from yeah, them because they didn't know what the fuck they were doing with their guns. It turns out they largely were yeah. uh, safe. And then we have a picture uh, that that's the, the head of that, that Twitter account. Um, so that's not the guy who probably did not the even shooting. loaded, according right. to these people. So that's not the guy who did the shooting. That's the uh, the guys who what did the, the shooting. I guess. Uh, refer said to everybody uh, right before the shooting on Twitter, according to the best information we have, you should follow this guy from now on. Yeah. And that's a guy who's British and in uh, in Syria fighting along with ISIS. Okay. Good, and good hence, distinction. Yeah. Hence the tenuous connection uh, to ISIS. A lot of these guys, before they go to do a shooting, they're like, "What are we doing this for? Uh, who's 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 hot these days? Al Qaeda, yeah. right?" Like, <laughs> one of the guys yeah. who spoke is uh, has a, a warrant on his head from Al Qaeda, which seems so old school at this point. Mm -hmm. Okay, but now ISIS is hot, so they're like, "Yeah, um, this guy who was going to fight with Al Qaeda earlier now says, yes, I meant ISIS.' I said, right, of course, Whatever. that's why I shot the guy in the ankle.'"